including the hydrologic cycle. The hydrologic cycle is a water cycle. They are synonyms. Okay? So basically, my definition, this definition is a bit broader than mine. Because I said hydrology is the science of the water cycle. I think I am correct if I say that. But of course, you see that there is some more here. Because there is quality. And the, the water cycle usually doesn't include the quality. So basically, my definition, as I said, is this is a bit broad. But my definition, I think, is clear. And you can still use it. But this is probably more, more uh, detailed. And, and, and you get a lot of uh, additional information like hydrology subdivides into surface water hydrology, groundwater hydrology, and marine hydrology. I would say that this subdivision could be improved. Uh, my, my feeling is that I hope in the future we will, we will not need these subdivisions anymore because there is an interface problem when you make a subdivision. So it's true that the scientific community hydrology is divided between surface hydrologists and groundwater hydrologists, but they need to connect, otherwise the description of the processes is not complete. But anyway, I think, uh, and there is a lot more here, we don't need to look into, to look at the details. It's just important that we know what is hydrology. I may ask you this question, now, what is hydrology? If you say, the science of the water cycle, this is fine. Or you may say something more. So this is our subject, because uh, we need to study this design variables. Before I move forward, I would like to show you a couple of videos. And, uh, First of all, uh, let me show you another picture. So I get the lecture that I, it's, uh, I'm not using anymore, the first lecture. This is an old version, so there is an old title, but I, I'm just, I just want to, here there are some, uh, there are some definitions that I already introduced. And let me get, okay, this is what I wanted to take. This is one of the many pictures of the water cycle that you can find on the web. And the nice thing of these pictures is that they show you the processes that are involved. And uh, you know, it's uh, something that you can easily find, let me see, let me go back to a web page. If I Google hydrological cycle, there are many of them, and uh, the most popular is this one, because it was developed by the USGS and uh, the United States Geological Survey, and it's free. This is a free image to use. It's in Wikipedia, in fact. This is the most popular. And what I suggest you is uh, take one of these pictures and spend five minutes to read all the processes. And uh, it's important that you try to understand uh, uh, what are the main components. And uh, in this case, uh, evaporation, evapotranspiration, and if you have any question, you don't understand what is evapotranspiration, you may ask me or you may go to Wikipedia and see evapotranspiration. Basically, evapotranspiration is a mix between evaporation and transpiration. And basically, it's the water flow from the earth to the atmosphere that takes place over the lands. Because over the lands, you have a mix of uh, uh, lakes, water storages, and forests. Transpiration is done by the plants. Evaporation takes place from the free water surfaces. And therefore, evapotranspiration is a term that is used to indicate both of them. From the oceans, you have all evaporation because you don't have plants. And, uh, and then uh, there is the sublimation, which is uh, the direct uh, uh, transfer from snow to water vapor. It's not really important. But Still, it's better that you know what is that. And 
and then there is the sublimation in the opposite from water vapor to, uh, to snow, precipitation, and uh, volcanic steam is something that recently appeared uh, because you know we are broadening our vision, and then uh, ice and snow, snow melt, runoff, stream flow, evaporation from uh, free water surfaces. And then groundwater flow, groundwater storage, you see the difference. And uh, vents and volcanoes, everything. It, it's extremely interesting to see. And uh, another thing that I suggest to you is to look at some numbers. There are some pictures where you can find numbers. I will try to make uh, these pictures available on my website because Sometimes it's a bit of a problem for me because uh, I cannot make the picture title available if it is copyrighted. I can only put the link. Uh, but I will try to set up a page uh, where I can provide you some links to the interesting uh, pictures. But you can find them. And uh, let me show you what I mean. Oh, sorry. I... There are some pictures with. Numbers, numbers are important, I tell you why. Let me see this one. No, this one has no numbers. Okay, so let me go back to my lecture because there are some numbers here. Okay, so here you have some numbers and uh, these numbers are extremely important and let me explain what they are. First of all, why I say that it's a good idea to look at numbers? Because you need to get a full, uh, let's say, you need to get fully acquainted with the orders of magnitude. The orders, the knowledge of the orders of magnitude allows you to work with intuition. If you have no idea of the orders of magnitude, it's hard for you to use intuition. So I may ask you a question, but you are not obliged to respond. If I ask you in your own country, do you know what is, on average, the rainfall depth, yearly rainfall depth in your country? I, I tell you, when I was a student at the university, I didn't know that. So basically, if I ask you, do you have an idea on average, over the world, over the globe, what is the annual rainfall depth if you don't know that, it's difficult for you to understand anything related to hydrology and the water cycle. If you don't have an order of magnitude, you don't need to know the exact number, but you need to know that on average over the Earth, it's one meter of rainfall every year. One meter. If you don't know if they are 10 centimeters instead of 10 meters, this is a, a problem. You need to know the order of magnitude. So on average over the world, rainfall is one meter. And uh, basically, at mid latitudes, this is uh, the amount of rainfall that you may expect. So over Italy, it's uh, 800 millimeters, the average over Italy. And uh, it spans from 600 in Sicily, 0.6 meters, to a couple of meters over the Alps in Italy. In Central Europe, I would say that one meter is a reasonable number. So this is why I say, look at these numbers. They are extremely important in, for you to get the first idea. And also, the order of magnitudes are important because as a when you get your degree, you start working, people that are working with you are a bit skeptical on your expertise. I already mentioned to you this problem. And therefore, they try to challenge you, especially people, uh, uh, practical workers, technicians, they often try to, try to challenge you. And uh, the easiest way to challenge a young person is to check if he, she knows the order of magnitude. And uh, if, you if you make a mistake in that, then they say, ah, okay, it's extremely important. So basically, what, what does this picture say? 
This is still available for download on my website, so you can download it. And uh, basically, the caption says, a logic cycle with global annual average water balance given in units relative to a value of 100 for the rate of precipitation on land. So basically, this picture assumes uh, that the average precipitation of the land is 1 meter, 100 centimeters, and then quantifies the other flows. So, by assuming that the rate of precipitation over the lands, over the ocean, is, is much higher. But over the lands, you can, I forgot to say that uh, just five minutes ago, when I said the average rainfall over the earth, I said one meter, is over the lands. Over the oceans, as I said, is much higher. Because there is more evaporation. So, if you assume that over the lands it falls uh, 100, you see precipitation on land up there, you have 61 evaporation. So this is an important order of magnitude. 60% of the water that falls over the lands evaporates, evapotranspirates from land. From land. Okay? Keep the difference. Land oceans. And then you make the difference between 161 and you get about 38 surface outflow. And then here it says one centimeter groundwater outflow. Okay. Here they provide this indication, but look, it's still an unsolved challenge to estimate this groundwater flow to the oceans. It's an unsolved challenge, which makes any ocean model and any climate model even more unreliable, uncertain. Okay, and then you have 400 evaporation from the ocean. And you may say, how oh, it's possible because uh, we have uh, 38 that enters and 400 that evaporates. Because you have 385 precipitation over the ocean. So precipitation over the ocean is about four times the precipitation over the lands.
So we know what hydrology is at this stage, and uh, I wanted to show you a video clip, but let me postpone it to the next uh, Thursday. And let me anticipate on Thursday and Friday, not bring it, you know, this year, or maybe on Friday, it's better if we start. So on Friday, next Friday, if it's uh, if you can bring your PC, it would be great. Uh, it's not necessary that you have one PC for each person. You can also work together, but uh, it would be, I think I would advise you to take one PC for each person, but if you can, for whatever reason, you can share. And uh, if you have any problem in, uh, in getting a PC to work with, uh, in, during the lectures, just let me know on Thursday if you tell me that you have no way of getting a PC to work with, I can solve the problem in some ways. Okay? But this is on Friday because we have the plugs here and this, this room is, is, uh, is fine for working with the PC with the personal computer. On Thursday it's just a lecture or a lecture like usual. Okay? Good, thank you. And the video will be made available if I didn't have any technical problem in a couple of days. Okay? But I think everything should be fine.